Hi, it's Tim from Cairo Up. This week we're going to talk about a problem that affects 10% of the population, and that's plantar fasciitis. We all know the plantar fascia on the undersurface of the feet runs from the medial calcaneus, spans out onto all five toes. And that band is important for locomotion because the foot has two roles. It has to be a flexible shock absorber, like when you step on a rock or a root, but then it needs to turn into a rigid lever to propel yourself, especially when you're running. You wouldn't want to hit a baseball with a bat that was flexible, and you don't want to propel yourself with a foot that's flexible. But it needs to transition between those two, and there are two ways that happens. Number one is the process of pronation, but number two is the plantar fascia. That because of the windlass mechanism, when the foot and toes dorsiflex, the plantar fascia wraps around that first metatarsal and the metatarsal heads and tightens up. And when it tightens, it pushes the arch up, locking out the foot, turning it into that rigid lever. Well, that happens all day long, which means that there's stress all day long and there starts to become irritation, especially at the origin of that band near the medial calcaneus. So the question is, what can you and I do to make a difference? We know that our treatment works, especially when we have a multifactorial treatment plan, that we're addressing it through manual therapies and through exercise. So I'd like to show you real quick what I do for the patient in office, and that'll complement this blog of what you can do at home or the patient can do at home. The first thing that we're going to see is usually some tightness in the gastroc and soleus. Anybody who's had chronic issues in their feet often have lost the ability to dorsiflex and when your calf can't be that shock absorber now the plantar fascia has to be that shock absorber so one of the things that I'll do is I'll put the foot into dorsiflexion and I will strip through the gastroc and the soleus usually we'll, we'll put a little bit of lotion on here and we can do that as a motion stripping as well to loosen up that gastroc and soleus the other thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to stimulate a little blood flow to that plantar fascia and break up adhesion. So I'll use my instrument, whether it be a factor tool or whatever you'd like, and I'm going to work through the plantar fascia itself, through the band, especially the medial aspect of that band, up onto the heel. And then we can take our, our Graston tool or our ISTM tool, our factor tool, and scrape across transverse friction-wise at the origin of that band. We're recognizing that plantar fasciitis isn't always an itis. Sometimes it's an apathy, like a lot of the other things we treat in the elbow and shoulder and knee and ankle. And it needs an increase in blood flow rather than a suppression of that inflammation. So the, the IASTM tool, the factor tool, allows us to accomplish that. One thing that sometimes we forget is that other muscles tighten up too, especially the hamstring, if you could flip over. That ham, patients who have plantar fasciitis are nine times more likely to have hypertenacy in the hamstring. So we'll make sure we stretch that out with a contract, relax, go ahead and push down, relax, and then stretch. Push down for three to seven seconds, relax and stretch. And finally, the last thing is that patients who have uh, plantar fasciitis often have coexistent hyperpronation. Let's face it, that's how they got plantar fasciitis in the first place. And that chronic pronation puts a lot of stress on the tarsal bones, Bones and, and cartilages that are stressed become inflamed, become sticky, and become stuck. So you and I have a great role to mobilize those joints. And one of the joints that I like to mobilize is the subtalar joint by applying a little bit of an axial distraction using my index fingers right at the crux of the ankle and applying a quick axial distraction to get some mo mobility back into that ankle joint. Those are the, some of the things that I use in office, but at home it's equally important that the patient play an active role in their recovery. We especially want them to strengthen the intrinsic muscles of their feet and the posterior tibialis. That the intrinsic muscles of the feet can be strengthened by things like a single leg stance or a valise where the patient is standing a couple of inches from a wall and they move their nose toward the wall. That's going to cause a lot of activation of those intrinsics. The other muscle that we don't want to forget is the posterior tibialis, which is going to run from the undersurface of the foot up into the back of the calf. It's kind of like a piece of duct tape that holds that plantar fascia up when the patient's walking and running. And ultimately, we'd like that intrinsic support to be the primary support so that the patient doesn't have to rely on an orthotic or rely on an arch support. They're wearing this 24-7 as opposed to having to change out that orthotic or arch support. And one of the ways that I like to strengthen the posterior tibialis is with a piece of, of therapy band. The patient will put that underneath their foot and then into a figure four and simply roll their foot up as though they're trying to look at the undersurface of their foot. So we're activating the posterior tibialis, trying to make that a participant in holding that arch up. This week's blog is going to talk about a couple of important things that we can do at home as well. A couple of the tools we'll use, number one, Lysol, dealing with feet. 
not sure that why that's there. But outside of that, we're talking about taping techniques, whether it be an elastic therapeutic tape or another technique with a slightly more rigid tape of tensoplast. We'll talk about how you can incorporate boots or Strasbourg socks to help hold that up so that the plantar fascia heals in a lengthened state because so many times the patient has pain with the first step in the morning. That's because they've torn that up all day long. They go to bed at night, their arches spring back up into this nice shortened state and the first time they stretch that out, it's like pulling a cut open each morning. That's gonna be painful. Whereas a Strasbourg sock or a brace or a tool to help hold that foot in dorsiflexion will allow the tissue to heal in a lengthened state. And finally, we'll talk about things that you can give that patient if they need some support but can't wear an orthotic or an arch support, things like a PSC Fabrifoam wrap. I hope that you enjoy the information in the blog. I'd love to hear what your recipe is for treating plantar fascia, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for watching.